thank you for meeting with us today, and I uh, appreciate it. Um, most of the people who spoke, but is there anybody in the audience who supports a dog park but did not speak today? Could you just stand up real quick or raise your hand, one of the two? Perfect. All right. So you can see there's a, quite a few folks who um, support the dog park but did not um, actually speak today. Um, we have about 20 minutes, I've been told, so I'm going to try to crank through this relatively quickly. And uh, if there's anything you want me to pause on, let me know, and um, we can uh, come back to stuff during your question and answers. So we did, as you know, um, kind of an informal petition drive as part of the effort to gauge support in the community and the surrounding area for a dog park. So what do we have? Well, we have um, 1,123 signatures, which we'll give to the city clerk tonight. Uh, we have a printout from the electronic petition, and we also have a bunch of hard copy petitions that were put out. Um, I would note that that 1,123 signatures uh, was achieved even though two hard copy petitions with a considerable number of signatures vanished, uh, one from Big Bad Wolf and uh, one from the veterinary clinic. Um, so uh, we probably would have had a few more signatures than that. So of that 1,123, there's Probably. approximately 577 Tacoma Park signatures. And I say approximately because I went through them pretty fast, and it was a little hard to read on a few of them. So um, what I think is also important, though, is not just to consider the Tacoma Park signatures, but also the people who live around the area. <clears throat> we have a lot of people from Silver Spring and a lot of people from uh, Tacoma, D.C., who signed the dog park petition because they come into the area, they spend money here in Tacoma Park at the Big Bad Wolf, and they're likely to use a dog park too. It's not like they're getting something for nothing. They are spending money here in Tacoma Park. We have 832 total area signatures. So basically, of that 1,123, you can see that 832 are people that I would suggest you really should listen to. But even if you don't want to, uh, 577 works pretty well. So what is the need for a dog park? Uh, this is some statistics that you might find interesting. According to Forbes magazine, I'm not sure if any of you actually uh, read Forbes, but um, there's about a, a cat or a dog for every one or two, uh, one cat or dog for every two people in the United States. Okay, that's an estimated 163 million cats and dogs. Um, 78.2 million dogs. So of that 163, 78.2 million dogs in the U.S. And this is according to the American Pet Products Association. That's about uh, one dog for every four people. So how does that break out for, for us? Well, 62 percent of American households own a pet, 43 percent are dogs. Tacoma Park has 17,021 people according to Google today. And that's about 4,250 dogs in Tacoma Park based on the national stats. Now, maybe it's 10% less, okay? That's still 3,500 dogs. So there's definitely a need in Tacoma Park for dog parks. I wanted to just really quickly run through some ownership of owning pets things you might not realize, there are some odd studies out there on these things, right? People study just about everything. Uh, pets help lower blood pressure. That's a study out of uh, SUNY uh, Buffalo. Um, pets help reduce stress. This is um, out of the United Kingdom. We have um, pets help prevent heart disease. I'll bet you didn't know that. Um, this is an interesting study out of the National Institutes of Health Technology Assessment Workshop. Pets help lower health care costs. Um, because of the other benefits that they have, obviously health costs are lowered. And finally, and this is something which I think from some of the commenters today who, who told you, pets help fight depression. They provide that companionship that is important. And just like you would want somebody else that you were close to, a human companion, to have enjoyment, I think those people who do own pets, and particularly dogs, want to make sure that those dogs have a good, healthy lifetime as well. So uh, let's talk about the benefits to Tacoma Park. Some of these were alluded to by individuals. Um, safer and happier interactions with everyone, dog lovers and haters, right? People who hate dogs, uh, don't like to be around dogs, or don't like to see dogs off leash are going to see a lot less of those dogs off leash if we have a dog park someplace for people to take dogs. 
So uh, dog owners keep their money in Tacoma Park rather than taking it out of the city. And I think that's a big benefit, and I'll cover some economic development issues a little bit later on. Uh, Well-socialized dogs, um, you, you just heard from several experts, people far smarter than I am in dog care, they basically told us that a well-socialized dog uh, tends to be less aggressive. And dog parks help facilitate that well-mannered dogs, if you will. Um, boost property values. Uh, communities with dog parks uh, tend to have more people actually looking to locate there. Uh, Forbes magazine did a top 10 cities were too small in population to be rated. They looked at a little bit larger cities. But uh, they listed the uh, dog amenities in Forbes magazine and come up with their top 10 list for dog owners. And one of the key factors that they looked at was dog parks. Uh, and this, I think, is important. Um, th there have been a lot of criticisms. I don't think much of them uh, terribly uh, factually borne out. But one of those is pet waste. And frankly, if the dogs are doing it in the dog park, I can assure you from visiting numerous dog parks, the dog owners in dog parks pick up their pet's waste. So it's a lot better to control the pet waste in one location of a dog park as opposed to throughout the city. And there are a number of environmental benefits to having that as well because pet waste does create a, a lot of waste problems if it's not picked up. If you have a dog park, it gets picked up. So let's talk about economic development briefly. I think this is kind of uh, interesting here, also from Forbes. Um, they said they shell out more for food and supplies and veterinary care for dogs than they do on beer, ice cream, cosmetics, and golf. Any Anybody on the council a golf, golfer? None of you guys? One, uh, one golf, we got one golfer. You, you don't compare to the dog owners, Jared. <laughs> Um, so, U.S. pet industry expenditures, according to the American Pet Products Association, $53.33 billion in 2012, or $682 per dog annually. So, let's multiply that by the number of dogs that we figured out, the over 4,000 dogs there are in Tacoma Park, based on the statistics. Dog owners are bringing this city $2,898,500 annually. So there's been a lot of criticisms of dog owners wanting this dog park and just take, take, take from the city. And our taxpayer dollars are going to be wasted on this dog park and these dog owners. Frankly, what we're asking for is a lot less than $2,898,500 in economic development. So I think dog owners are paying their fair share. Uh, here's an expenditure by household. One of the things you'll see in this chart is that it covers just about every conceivable household that you might think about. Single, married, one parent, children, no children, everybody is spending money on their dogs. <clears throat> so what does a dog, good dog park look like? It's quiet. Some people seem to think that dog parks are noisy and they tend to be actually relatively quiet. They're safe. They're safe because they're fenced. Dog parks have a double gated system so that you go through one gate, you close the gate behind you before you take your dog off leash, you take your dog off leash, and then you open the interior gate. And you do the reverse when you're coming out of the dog park. Walkable. It's important that Tacoma Park not look at just one location for a dog park. We don't have a huge area to build an enormous dog park. So it's better, and what many communities do who are similarly situated to Tacoma Park is that they build several smaller dog parks, lower cost per dog park because it's smaller, and that way it allows people to walk to the dog park rather than have to drive their car. The environmental benefits are obvious, but also minimizing the impact of traffic and parking I think is important as well. Shaded, dogs need shade, it's pretty hot in the town and uh, it's nice for the dogs to have a shaded area. Water, that's a key feature, but I would note that the Hyattsville Dog Park has no running water, and the dog owners bring their own water. So the lack of a plumbed dog park should not be an obstacle to creating one. We can bring our own water until such time as we can uh, get a plumbed system. Restrooms, that's ideal, but unnecessary. This would be for the humans, by the way, not the dogs. <laughs> Thank um, you. 
some of the dog parks you'll see don't have restrooms, and it works. Um, but restrooms are a nice thing to have if we can afford it. Uh, benches, people need places to sit and socialize. Um, not all of the uh, users of dog parks. Um, some of the folks here are getting up there in years, and it, it's much better sometimes for those folks to be able to sit down. Tables, same thing. Fenced. Uh, I know earlier uh, incarnations of the dog park proposal were for an unfenced dog park, and we're not asking for that. In fact, we're specifically uh, expecting that the dog park would be fenced. And double gated, which I've already covered. Uh, this is a key part, small and large dog area. Um, I've had several people ask me about this, and this is something that we are going to encourage the city, when it creates the dog park, to look at creating. And that's basically a fence in the middle of the dog park where about two-thirds are for the large dogs and about a third are for the small dogs. Some small dogs do just fine around big dogs, but not all of them, and some owners prefer to have the ability to go to the small dog area. It also, um, it, since the small dog area isn't used very often, can be if there is a problem dog and there's no one else there, they can take their dog to the small dog area and exercise it during the small dog area. I might note that our police department has some canines, and uh, I imagine those canines could benefit from uh, exercise as well. Some of them might not get along terribly well with other dogs, and in that case, they could use the small dog area if it were otherwise unused. So, how quiet? Hopefully the sound is up all the way. You want me to play that again for you, or did you get that? They're, they're, they're kind of quiet. You can hear the traffic noise in the background. You can hear some birds chirping. Occasionally, you can hear some feet rustling through the gravel and the dirt. And that's it. Dog parks aren't noisy. Dogs, when they're playing, aren't standing around barking at each other. Dogs bark when they feel threatened. They're in their yard, they feel threatened, or they're lonely and people are walking by. A well-socialized dog barks less. Dog parks are not noisy, they're very quiet. So let me just cover Baltimore's Patterson Dog Park. This is a Cadillac dog park, and while I'd love to have one of these, this is not what we're expecting. But they use a turf rather than an astro-type turf specifically designed for dog parks. It's easy to clean. It controls the waste very effectively. Um, and it doesn't require maintenance. So while there's an initial uh, cost that's higher to install uh, this type of turf, the overall maintenance costs are considerably lower. You'll notice the trees are protected from the dogs so that they survive. Um, there's also a hard surface, which works just fine, and there is, and you can see some rocks to run on and play on. If you look there, uh, kind of at that second photo in the background, there's a little bridge that they go over, a little water course, so for dogs that like water and bridges, it works. So here's what the Patterson Park looks like. Um, this actually is not a uh, terribly uh, large park, believe it or not. Um, it is probably below the size which the Montgomery County requires for a minimum dog park size. Uh, Council Member Siemens, you asked what the minimum requirement is, and in <coughs> Montgomery County, it's 10,000 square feet. All of our proposed sites exceed the 10,000 square foot requirement. But we would suggest that if you're looking at community-based dog parks where you're looking at pocket parks, smaller, where the individual neighborhoods could just bring four or five dogs, those would be considerably smaller than 10,000 square feet in size. And if it's not a county park, if it's only a city park, you don't have to worry about that county size requirement. So, neighborhood dog parks. Our proposal is three neighborhood dog parks in a phased process. We certainly know money is an issue very legitimately, and we are suggesting that one of the dog parks be created immediately with a plan and a budget in several years out to expand the dog park network to three dog parks around the city. 
Neighborhood parks, as I've talked about, reduce the need to drive and reduce traffic, something that we all know, and I know you all know from hearing from your constituents, traffic's a problem in this city. Neighborhood parks reduce impacts from potential overuse. If there's one park that everybody goes to, it has the possibility of being overused, and the neighborhood parks reduce that. So locations. Location one, Tacoma Piney Branch Park, which is otherwise known as Ed Wilhelm Park, and the terrace specifically. So uh, that highlighted area is the area that we're talking about. <clears throat> Here's an aerial photograph which shows the location. You'll notice that there's no competing use. It doesn't interfere with the ball field. It doesn't interfere with any of the other playgrounds. Uh, it's a really, really excellent site because it's well shaded. And plenty of trees. There are, absolutely. One of the nice things about this site is it sits up on a, a slightly elevated, uh, probably about a 10 foot high hillside. And that hillside is used by people to sit almost like bleachers to watch the games. The dog park wouldn't interfere with that. We're proposing that the fence be at the top of that slope so as to not negatively impact the people who use it now for watching the games. Do you have a question, Council Member Grimes? Uh, there'd be no alterations in the trees. Not as far as I'm concerned. I think it would be fine, and we could uh, dogs would love them. We could put, you know, small if we needed to. We obviously talked to Todd Bolton about this, the city arborist. But if he wanted it, you know, we could easily well, fence it around. A, it is a county park. Yes, and and clearly so we need Todd Bolton could consult, but uh, he wouldn't be the person who would. Anyway, that's a detail point. Right. Uh, it, it is a county park, and the county does have to consent. But since there, as you know, is a memorandum of agreement on how the county parks are managed within Tacoma Park, it also needs the support of the city council. So if it's something the city council wanted, the county would be more interested. Um, I would note uh, that we have been working with the county on these proposals. We've been in contact with them. They have not specifically agreed to any of these locations, but they are aware that we've been talking about these locations and are doing some work with us and have met us on site at one of the locations. Did the county working group that has tentatively or maybe dec decisively planned a dog park for near the Silver Spring Library, did they look at this location? Uh, they, they, they have not looked specifically at any locations in Tacoma Park. So they didn't consider this one. That's correct. But okay. what they have done is they've expressed to me, and this is from the staff level, I understand, uh, they've expressed they would like to have a Tacoma Park location. They just haven't found one yet. No, that, that's fine. The, the question was really did they look at this and yeah. find some reason not to pursue this one? No, they were looking primarily in Silver Spring. There's okay. two locations in sure. Silver Spring they're looking at. And you did say all your proposals are over 10,000 square feet, so that doesn't present a problem on county park land. In fact, that's right. If you look at this slide, um, I'll cover that in just a second. Uh, Council Member yeah, Mayles? Okay. Um, the site which you saw is uh, 24,150 square feet, approximately. It's kind of an odd shape, so measurements are rough. But uh, remember, the requirement is a 10,000 square foot dog park, and we came up with 24,000 square feet. Bathrooms and trash cans are already present, excellent shade, no competing uses whatsoever. Uh, minimal land preparation, if you just wanted to put up the fence, you could. It's already got grass there, and the grass is pretty solid. It's not muddy. Uh, it would work really, really excellently. And there's parking nearby. The park already has parking, and it's parking that is seldom filled up. Yes, sir? What, what would be the annual maintenance cost for this particular location? We're going to cover maintenance costs in a subsequent slide. Here's a picture of the terrace. Um, you can see it's not used. It's just grass. And these are really, really important. These are the bathrooms and existing trash cans. So there wouldn't be any additional infrastructure requirement other than if the city chose to at some point put water there, it would be great to have water. But as I mentioned, that's not a necessity to go forward with the dog park. Second location, Tacoma Piney Branch Park parking lot. So same park, but uh, <clears throat> that's not supposed to be there. Not sure why that is. Let me check this for a second. Hmm. Apologize for that. Um, so anyhow, um, that's not supposed to say terrace features. That's supposed to say parking lot features. Um, 
30,800 square feet is the next one. Um, bathrooms are nearby. Parking is actually at the dog park. Excellent shade. Uh, also no competing uses. And site preparation, while not quite as easy as the last one, uh, would require some brush clearing and some surface prep. So where is that? Uh, if you look at the lower part of the picture is the one we just talked about previously, which was the terrace site. If you look at the upper picture, that is the site we're talking about uh, now. Let me show you the aerial photograph so you get a little bit better picture of what it looks like. You can see the parking lot in the picture. That's where existing parking is, and that parking seldom fills up. And the area is really nice because it's got some nice shade trees, but the rest of it is brush. It's overgrown with uh, thistles and thorns and all kinds of things that don't allow people to use it. The only thing we don't know about this site is what the ownership is. I believe it might be partially owned by the county and partially owned by the school district, and that might present some additional problems. That's why the terrace location is our preferred location. And here's a picture of it. You can see the nice trees, and back behind those trees is brush. Here's the other vision, uh, other view. If you look to your right, that's the brush I was talking about that would need to be cleared. And, you know, the only car parked there, by the way, is my car. So you can see it, it doesn't tend to get a lot of use from a parking lot perspective. Third location, Prince George's Triangle. So what are some of the features of the Prince George's Triangle? 33,000 square feet. It already has benches and trash cans installed. It has excellent shade. There are no competing uses, and site preparation would be uh, minimal. You could put up a fence and have a dog park. That's the location. Um, you can see it's bounded by Prince George's Avenue and New Hampshire Avenue. Now, we understand in this site there has been, in the past, some community opposition to this dog park, and I don't want to pretend that there's not been. But it is an excellent site, and given the fact that the dog park would be really quiet, as you've seen from the video, um, I think that with working with the residents, we could probably meet their concerns there as well. And here's an aerial photo just to give you a better idea of the proximity. It's got a really nice long area, which is great for dogs that want to run. That's one of the ideal things about it. And there it is, lawn trees, nice shade trees. The last um, one, now we said three sites, but I'm giving four. Um, Sligo Creek Parkway and Maple Avenue. Uh, it's about 30,000 square feet, depending on the size of the buffers the county would want for the stream, because there's a storm drain that comes out under the parking lot for the apartment building there, and you'll see what I'm talking about in a second. And they consider that part of the stream system, and that would require, I believe, a 75-foot buffer. No competing uses. Um, no site contiguous neighbors. None. Minimal opposition. Um, I, certainly, I don't think anything in Tacoma Park has no opposition. But uh, <laughs> I expect minimal opposition to this. And no site preparation. It's basically a big grass field, and you could put a fence up and have a dog park. It's not much parking location though? There's plenty of street parking during the day. In the evenings the street parking is difficult. One of the things that I would uh, try to do is work out an agreement with the apartment building nearby. Um, whether they'd be amenable to that or not, I'm not sure. But um, I would note that their lot on the side that's closest to the dog park tends not to fill up. So there are some spaces usually available. <laughs> And here's an aerial photo um, of the area. There are, is some shade along the edges of the dog park. Um, the county has some concerns about this location. Honestly, I, this was my number one choice and would have been number one, but for the county concerns. Uh, the county concerns consist of the, the buffer on the stream. Um, and also there is supposedly an historic foundation of an old historic building that is buried there. Now, the dog park wouldn't disturb that, but we certainly would have to work with the historic preservation experts of the county to make sure that their concerns were addressed at this site. And here's a picture. Lots of grass, a few trees, obviously not taken today. 
Um, costs. I know this is something that's important to everybody here. Uh, fencing is a cost. Bench is a cost. Ground cover, if you choose to change the ground cover, water. Insurance. Insurance was the big thing that killed the dog park effort last time. Why? Because the city only looked at an unfenced dog park. The city did not ask their insurer what would be our premium increase if we had a fenced dog park. Remember, we have a skate park, and dog parks are a lot safer than skate parks. Um, if you've ever got on YouTube, search for a skate, skateboarding accidents, you'll see what I mean. Well, that's a county skate park, not a city one. It is, and this is county land as well. But what the MOA says with the county is that the city basically has to carry the insurance on the space. Does that include for the skate park? Um, I don't know, but it says specifically for the, the parks within Tacoma Park. Take a look at the MOA, and I can share that with you. But it, it has basically shifts most of the cost to Tacoma Park, but gives the council some more control and influence over the space. I, I, let me just interject. I consider that a relative detail as well. Okay. Um, this uh, is from the uh, city staff report to the city council when this last came before you during a work session. Um, note here that they're talking only about an unfenced dog park and talked about greater loss exposure and recommended that all dog parks be fenced. This is from our insurer, and that's what we're proposing. City staff cost assessments. Um, this is from the city manager. She said prior city manager, not the current Don't want to call the current city manager she, sorry. Um, the uh, prior city manager noted the majority of the cost would be for the fence, um, five foot high decorative black aluminum fence range of forty to forty five dollars per linear feet. foot. The research that I did today um, from a website known as Homewise pegs the cost of chain link fencing significantly lower, starting at sixteen sixty five to twenty one thirty three. So I'm not sure the costs that the city staff pulled up are the costs and what they would be. I well, think they could be lower. I think the significant difference there is decorative uh, black aluminum fence as compared to ugly chain link fence. Right. And, and right. you know, it, obviously it would be up to council how nice they want the fencing to look. So um, let's talk about how much it's going to cost us. Based on Ed Wilhelm Park, since that was our first choice, and the linear feet of fencing, from the low in the HomeWise estimate and the high on the high side of the city estimate would cost between $12,379, excuse me, and $33,480. Not an insignificant cost, but not huge. Particularly when you look that the recreation budget and park capital improvements are a lot of money, $1.38 million and $150,000. We're asking for 2.1% of that to build a dog park. And this is one of the things that I know Councilmember Smith was interested in, that's the operation. And we're suggesting that the operation could be virtually free. How do we come up with that? We're suggesting a public-private partnership with the Coma Dogs. That's the organizing group for this dog park effort. You've seen the shirts seen the logo. Um, we're not an incorporated organization yet. But what we could do is if we were to enter into this public-private partnership is incorporate as a 501c3 nonprofit corporation that would be devoted to dog park operation to ensure it's safe, ensure it's clean, ensure it's stocked with poop bags for people to pick up their dog waste, um, ensure that water bowls and the play areas are clean, that sort of thing. We're committed enough to this effort to commit to council that we'd be willing to do this. We're not expecting to dump this all on the city. Construction is going to be the major part. We can handle the rest. One of the ways that we can handle operations costs is through volunteers and advertising sales. We would obviously need to get the consent of the council if it's on city land and the consent of the county to do this if it's on county land. But we're suggesting that we sell, much like you see in a ballpark, placard advertising on the inside fence of the dog park so that the advertisement would not be facing out, but it would be facing into the dog park. 
depending on the height of the advertising, this would also have the benefit of blocking the view of the dogs. Sometimes the barking that does occur at dog parks comes from the dogs coming to the fence and barking at other dogs who might be walking by the fence. And if they can't see what's out there, they don't have anything to bark at. So you get two benefits out of the advertising. One, paying for operations costs, and two, um, quieter dogs. Obviously, you would need to improve imp uh, expenditures for improvements if you were paying for them. But if they were improvements that Tacoma Dogs was paying for, we would ask for the ability to approve the uh, improvements ourselves. So if we were putting in a bench, we wouldn't want to have to go through the county pro I mean, the city process to do that. We'd want authority to put that bench in ourselves at our own expense. That's it. Questions? Councilmember Seaman. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Joe, you mentioned uh, the importance of having these uh, dog parks scattered across the city because we have dog owners all across the city. Uh, yet uh, the three of the four dog parks that you have suggested are located right in this immediate area. Um, yeah, that was because they were the easiest places to put the dog park, but we're certainly open to putting it in other places and other wards. Um, note the one over on New Hampshire Avenue I picked specifically because it was far right, away and right. also easy to do. But you're right, they, they are located pretty close together, the top three. What we would probably suggest is that you go with the Ed Wilhelm, you go with the Triangle, and then we look at uh, something more up toward University Boulevard if there's right. a location we can find up there. Uh, Fred's house. I just suggested your yard might be. Uh, we're, we're, we're okay with that. Um, you know, I would note, too, that most of you have signed the petition for the dog park in support of the dog park, and we really appreciate that because I know it's hard sometimes to go on record publicly before all the details are worked out. And so I really appreciate that. I know several of you didn't, and you have very legitimate reasons for not doing so, but I wanted, before we ended today, to thank each of you who have signed that petition. I don't remember whether I signed or not. You did. <laughs> Council Member Schultz. Did I sign? You did not. <laughs> <laughs> However, you what? did in an email tell me that you supported the concept of a dog park. It was just the location uh, I, I that was the issue. I think that was taken out of context. I never said any such thing. Perhaps. <laughs> I deny everything. Uh, I've become a connoisseur of dog parks because uh, we have a camper van and a greyhound, and before that we had a, uh, a smooth collie, and before that we had uh, two Irish setters. So, uh, um, and we've seen an awful lot of dog parks across the United States as well as seen some in Manhattan, which is interesting. Uh, and, um, and just from the experience of them, and they range from very intense use, like in uh, Tompkins Square on the lower east side of Manhattan, uh, which is like a 24-hour park. It used to be uh, known not too many years ago, 15, 20 years ago, as one of the most dangerous drug places in the, in the city. Uh, now it's, it's just the opposite, and there's a beautiful dog park in there, um, and it's all paved, uh, surrounded by wrought iron fence, and, uh, and there's a, a park employees who have facilities right there. They, they maintain it to seeing parks uh, that basically are just a big giant field with trees, a double gated gate, and that's it. You walk in and let your dog off the leash and just stand there and watch the dog wander around or run. I mean, so, and there's a lot in between. Uh, the parks that don't work, successfully are the ones that are too small for the amount of use that they get, that don't have adequate slope for drainage so that there's you know snow and rain puddles uh, where the intensity of use causes the sod just to get beaten down. 
so that there's all nothing there. And where there's just no, there's not enough supervision to make sure that the quality of the park is just being maintained. And that that's, uh, would be my concern um, because there's you know, as much as much as we love dog parks and having a greyhound, I can assure you that they, you know, they're notorious for running only in one direction. That's away, uh, and uh, they don't come back until you get in your car and you go find them. Uh, so to be able to have a place that's enclosed to let the greyhound run is is so much is so great, and it's a joy to watch these dogs go. And uh, but but there's a, when a park isn't properly maintained or it's not the right size or has the wrong elements, there's nothing worse. <laughs> it's the last place you want to take your dog. So th th that would be the primary concern number one. Uh, and I, I can th I think that the ones you're talking about are adequate in size, so that wouldn't be the case. But the second part is, of course, the the maintenance. And in a city like Tacoma Park with all these dogs, there's no question that there's easily 4,000 dogs in, this, in our city. Uh, it's going to require seven day a week maintenance because you know, even when people pick up, uh, and most do after their dog, the waste goes in a can, the can fills up very quickly, even if it's covered, it can stink time. Heaven. Uh, so, and um, water sources, uh, you know, have to be kept fresh. One of the problems that I know at Wheaton Park we had for a while was that the fresh water was allowed to run into a big plastic swimming pool and the dogs could walk around in it, but then that's what they'd also drink. And you can't have that. The, the, you, it's great to have a place for the dogs to uh, walk, you know, splash around or lay down like my dog likes to do and cool off. But she, but you need to have fresh water for them to drink. Little things like that can make a big difference to the health of the dogs. Um, so those those and I and I think that the, the intensity of use creates the intensity of maintenance and. Um, and and the intensity of maintenance is reflected in operating costs, um, and that would be my concern. And I know that you're talking about a volunteer organization that would do that, which is what I would hope to see. Um, but when you're talking seven days a week, most days of the year, except for when there's maybe really inclement weather or snow or something like that. That's that's a lot of burden to put on volunteers, and I would be concerned about the sustainability of the volunteers to be able to do that, uh, not just for one park, but if there's two, then there'd be even more demand on their on their time. Quick response. Um, one of the things I would note is in our research, we looked at a number of dog parks around the country. And it's not uncommon for a friends of organization to exist for that dog park uh -huh. and that that friends of organization does have maintenance responsibilities. They have volunteer sign up lists, that sort of thing. So it has worked in other locations and given the really pro volunteer spirit we have here in Tacoma Park, I, I think that if any place it would work, it would work here. Mm -hmm. And we would envision that that be recorded in a written memorandum of agreement between Tacoma Dogs and the city, probably three-way in the county, if it was on a county location, mm -hmm. that would spell out just what the expectations were so that if something wasn't getting met, the city could call us up and say, look, you know, this is a problem. We need to get it fixed. Okay. And if I can just follow up on that, in, in your looking around, would you characterize that uh, many or most or some percentage of the dog parks have a friends of or something like that? Well, most of the parks I looked at have a friends of organization. Now, whether it has formal responsibilities or not, I, I couldn't honestly mm -hmm. answer for you. I know that a couple of the ones I looked at, such as the Baltimore Park, 
had specifically responsibility. They had a volunteer sign-up list, that sort of thing. And, and um, how about uh, other dog parks' experience with the ads? Um, I haven't seen that anywhere, actually. Um, that was just something I came up with on my own. Since I know money has been a big concern on the list serves, and right. so I wanted to try to address those community okay. concerns the best I could. And one other quick observation I had. I've seen uh, just regular parks. Maybe they were considered to be unfenced dog parks, but they just appeared to be regular parks in a number of other locations where they did have the poop bags. Uh, in your looking around, did, did you see a number of places that provided those bags in all the parks, or did they tend to only be in something that had a designation as a dog park? Uh, Actually, I found it's pretty common. The Task Force on Environmental Action, which I think most of you know I was one of the co-chairs for, uh, we made a specific recommendation in our report that the city fund and place dog bags, doggy bags, poop bags in various locations around the city as a way of addressing waste issues. So um, it would be consistent with the recommendations we made to put them other locations other than just the dog park. Okay. And um, in, in talking with the owner of Big Bad Wolf, she noted that sometimes some dog parks do have uh, corporate sponsors that provide the bags for free in exchange for some advertising. Mm -hmm. Good. Thanks. Councilmember Grimes. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the effort that's gone into the research and to creating a base of support in Tacoma Park and beyond the city's borders and in putting together a very helpful presentation. I, am, I I think this is all doable. Uh, the cost doesn't seem like a big worry. My concerns, these are concerns that I would ask uh, you to address in cooperation with the city uh, to make this a reality would be um, several. One is I, uh, I, I do have the concern about the waste management and collection, uh, and that's, you know, that can be planned for and taken care of, but I, I would like to see some kind of uh, impact assessment uh, that is what kind of waste collection would be needed, but also uh, an environmental assessment. Uh, for instance, I don't believe that the site at the foot of Maple Avenue at Sligo Creek Parkway has a drainage problem, but uh, are we sure whether it does or not? It, it doesn't, even when there are heavy rains, I mean. Yeah, I, I've, I mean, you know, if, if it rains continuously here in the city, I think we'd be hard-pressed to find any natural grass that doesn't have some standing water. But it drains pretty well. I've been over there when it's been wet myself, and I haven't seen any particular problem. Yeah, okay. Well, so I just want to you know the uh, – it doesn't have to be in a huge level of detail, but uh, the uh, – just an assurance about the environmental impact of having a dog park because it concentrates in one location uh, uh, usage that would be spread throughout the city. Okay. So that's just a that's just a step to take uh, to make this a reality. Uh, secondly, perhaps a greater concern is neighborhood impact. That I, I except what you said about the noise and so on. Uh, if uh, reasonable hours were established and all that kind of stuff, I, I think people would adhere to them. But there would be a parking and traffic impact in particular, for instance, at the Ed Wilhelm Park locations, which are accessed via uh, dead-end streets uh, that are in my ward, but that's pretty incidental. But that means I have to, uh, and I'm happy to do it, to help interact with the neighbors there. Uh, so there would be a parking and traffic. There would also be pedestrian traffic going through there and all that kind of stuff. So what I'd propose to do with you, uh, I would do it with you and your um, collaborators for the Ed Wilhelm locations, is to flyer the houses in the immediately adjacent neighborhood to make sure they know about this and to set up a meeting where we'll have a discussion, uh, you know, and. I'm sure there'll be enthusiastic dog owners in those neighborhoods who will be all for this, and there could be some people whose uh, concerns we need to address. So that that would be another thing I'd ask to do, and I would be happy to collaborate with you on that. For the other locations, those aren't in my ward. I, I am somewhat skeptical, frankly, about the Prince George's Avenue location, given that it's uh, uh, embedded in some residential streets, but that's just a uh, another reason to do the same kind of thing in that neighborhood, and then also at uh, the Maple and Sligo Creek Parkway location. And then the third element seems to be a real discussion with the property owners in each case to make sure that uh, we can get them to go along with this. That would be MNCPPC, that's Montgomery County Parks. Uh, it would be 
uh, who did, is it uh, MNC PPC that owns the location at Maple and uh, Slug Creek Parkway That's as correct, well? Yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, again, uh, the discussion with them to uh, just find out what it is we need to convince them to do that. Uh, and, and you know that's that's really it, and and I think that we could make uh, at least one park a reality uh, within a year. Uh, I, it, you know, when you're dealing with a bunch of agencies and neighborhoods and all that kind of stuff, uh, then there is a certain amount of process you have to go through. I don't know what expectation you had in terms of being able to, to uh, uh, do something like this, but it's not just a matter of uh, finding. $30,000 and buying a bunch of fence and sticking it up. There's more process to it than that, but but it's all doable. Um, one thing on the environmental issue that you raised, Councilmember Grimes, the um, artificial turf solution that I looked at, by the way, um, has um, a drainage surface underneath, and it is set up to uh, collect uh, urine so that it can be treated more effectively. Uh, so uh, there are some environmental benefits, actually, of using the artificial solution, although the construction cost would be a little bit higher. Yeah, I, I don't know much about that, but I do recall that when uh, County Council Member Mark Elrich uh, spoke to the City Council just a week ago, uh, he sent it about the Safe Grow Zone proposal and sent in some written comments. He included in them a paragraph about artificial turf that he didn't like it. So uh, there's some things to look into there. I don't know anything about the artificial turf that you're discussing here, but, uh, you know, of course there are trade-offs. So it's just something to look into. It's not a, it's not a, something that's going to stop this. It's just something to take care of. We'll do that. Customer Romeo. Thank you, Mayor. Um, would you stock the dog park with semi-flightless chickens? Um, <laughs> it, if you're willing to fund that, I'm sure we could stock it. I still feel badly about uh, Jennifer's chicken, uh, which my black lab, 18-month-old black lab, did exactly what its genes told it to do. Just track it down and corner it with its mouth. Um, <laughs> I, I guess I'm a little bit, uh, I support the idea of the dog park and, and it's the, the, the last question I'm going to get to is process of what's next. Um, I'm, I, my initial reaction to the idea of advertising is to be opposed to that way of financing it. If it's a service that the city residents want the city to provide, we should find a way to provide it the same way we do other services. If we're going to go to advertising as a model, I, I, I would have a hard time thinking about a reason why we wouldn't do advertising in all our playgrounds or... Um, you know other public spaces, so just you know that's that's a that's a um, that's a technical detail. Uh, you know, I did another idea that came to my mind was the idea of having a, a, a voluntary dog stamp. Essentially, you get like an extra license. You know, ten dollars a person. If you want to pay it, money could like that could go into a fund to help pay for maintenance or other costs, fencing costs. Um, but I'm a little bit concerned about the advertising, and I just wonder if. Um, the presence of advertising might create another reason to oppose it. So looking at a viewscape of a green treed space, having it then be a green space that has a black attractive fence around it, but then having the advertising might might be something that creates more resistance. Um, uh, I really like the idea of having pocket parks, so having some um, anchor parks and then some smaller uh, places around the city. Um, so that's that's great. I hadn't thought of that before. Um, what does that note mean? Um, I guess the question in terms of Councilmember Grimes spoke about uh, talking to the neighbors, uh, I think, first. And I, I, I don't know if I wouldn't actually talk to the prop or have the city talk to the property owners first just to see if these sites are even within the realm of possibility. Um, I just wonder if we talk to neighbors first, we might be starting a conversation that ends up not being productive anyway because the, the property owner's willingness to say yes or no uh, is ultimately a, a very clear black and white. Um, and frankly, that's something that are, is in the power of our city staff to, 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 to handle without a, an awful complicated process. So I don't know if you have thoughts on sort of what's what's next for us. What, what, would, be the, what would be the ideal way that you would want to see us reply to, and to, the, to this presentation? We were thinking that if council is generally in favor of moving toward a dog park, that we would get more serious about our discussions with the county, so it's in line with what you were suggesting, Councilmember Mayo. So um, I think that would be the next step. Once we figured out that those locations are acceptable to the county, then I think we could begin that 
public process. And I think Councilmember Grimes' suggestion of reaching out to area property owners is a good one and something that, you know, I think with the volunteers that we have, we could easily knock on doors and talk to folks. You know, th this is one of those issues that I would say two things about. One, it tends to be a NIMBY issue, right? We love dog parks, just not near me. Um, the, the other component of this is some people are opposed and are just never going to support it. Um, and that seems to be the case with schools and parks and everything when you want to locate something next to people. Uh, I think we have good reasons, particularly the, the amenities and the property value increases that people could see from this, but we're going to have some people opposed no matter what, and my guess is there will be more people opposed of the group that live near the dog park than not. Mm -hmm. I think uh, uh, the way the city handles sidewalks is an important way to think about this. So we don't just ask the people who live on the block where a sidewalk would be proposed. We also talk to residents within one block of every of, in every direction from the uh, proposed sidewalk or the proposed sidewalk change. Um, and I think you're right about the, you know, the people who are m most likely to be resistant to it are probably the ones who live closest to it. One thing I'd like to add about the advertising concept, we're not wedded to that, mm -hmm. but one of the big concerns expressed publicly so far has been the cost and who's going to pay for it and I don't want my taxpayer dollars paying for dog parks. My taxpayer dollars pay for kid parks and I don't have kids and I'm all for that, right? I think that's good. Um, I would love to see taxpayer dollars pay for the dog park and not have to go through the hassle of trying to get advertising because it would be um, a challenge just in terms of human resource hours. So if that's the way the council and the city wanted to go, we would definitely support no advertising. Mm -hmm. But if the concern is cost, that's one way of offsetting the cost. Um, one thing I would note, um, the county charged a fee for dog park use for a while, and they dropped it. And they dropped it because people weren't going. And all of the benefits of having a dog park went away because people just said, oh, we're not paying the fee, it's too big of a hassle. Probably wasn't even the amount, it was just the headache of trying to go through that. So that is something that I would strongly recommend against doing here in the city, and that's um, having some sort of fee associated with the dog park. It didn't work for the county, and I suspect it won't work for us either. Councilmember Daniels Cohen. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, uh, Joe, this was a fabulous presentation. I, I, I don't think you left any stone unturned. They're all here. I, uh, you know, everything is is out there. It was it was just well put together. Um, I don't think you're going to have any problem getting a friends of started based on what's out here. These are committed people. I can tell that, that they're committed people. I mean, friends of the library does. I don't think has as many folks as are are, are sitting out here now. Dollars, you know, of course that's that's another bridge to cross. Uh, and it, it may not be as difficult uh, as, as, you know, there are grants and things like that. And the, the, the places that you talked about are all Maryland Capital, um, am I crazed here? Maryland Capital Park and Planning locations. Ed, Ed Wilhelm Field is not Montgomery, Montgomery County, but it's Maryland National Capital. Yeah, I, which is, um, that's another, um, how do I say this? Uh, challenge. Always Maryland National Capital Park and Planning is a challenge. Uh, but, the, but the places were, are spectacular. I, I agree that maybe some, uh, some place over in Ward 6, you know, on the other side might be a, 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 might be a, a third park somewhere in there, though yeah, I don't know if you want to put it in the middle of the old Landsberg store <laughs> over in, uh, in Langley Park. Uh, what else? Ah. The city of Bowie, their dog park, the one that I've gone to with my friend, is embedded in the city, right next to an elementary school in the middle of beautiful, uh, all the, you know, some of the really nice homes in Bowie. Uh, my experience going over, let me tell you, the first time I went over there, I, I, I almost died because her little dog goes running out into these big beasties. I'm like, oh my God! He's going to be killed. He's going to be killed. It didn't happen. You know, she just said, calm yourself down, calm yourself down. It's all going to be okay. And the dogs just played. I mean, they have a good old time. 
he had pals, and if he wanted to get away from uh, somebody who might have been giving him a bad time, he went under the legs of an another dog. So, you know, I, it w it, I, needed, I needed some sort of uh, Valium or something. <laughs> she knew that's what was going to happen to me. So, uh, but they don't, ha they, they don't have a problem with dog poop. I mean, if you don't pick up your dog, your, your waste, somebody says to them, Pick it up. I mean, they don't let you walk out without without making you pick it up. It's or they pick it up themselves. I'm assuming. You know. I mean. You know. But so far, she's been. This guy's like five, six years old. They've been going over there every day for that many for that long. So, uh, Bowie doesn't seem to have a problem. There may be another dog park over there. Uh, the only one I know of is like real, real close to. Uh, the uh, one of the elementary schools. What else did I write down here? Um, I, like I said, I don't think waste management and collection is going to be a problem. I, I know so, uh, somebody up here said within a year, of course, I'm impatient. Uh, I said uh, September or October would be really great if we could get something going, especially a place that all you have to, all you have to do is put fencing up. It would be really, it would be super duper. You know, uh, I, I don't see issues that other people see in lots of things. So I, I usually have on rose-colored glasses, so I just don't see the bad part. Uh, it may be there. And I just know, I know you've got the volunteers here because I know I, I've got three of them who feed feral cats. And those cats, they feed them every day. One person feeds five colonies, at least five colonies every day. These cats have not gone hungry one day for at least the three years that I was, was doing it. So when you're committed to another animal and it's committed to you, you, you have a whole, different, a whole different experience of life and outlook when, when, when you know you're responsible for, for, for little animals. So uh, I, I just, I don't see uh, volunteering folks to be a problem for you guys. So I, I can't remember, I think I signed a petition at the vet and they probably lost it. So <laughs> I'm sure I signed it at the vet because I definitely own the front end of that vet right now. Well, you're, you're welcome to sign it again, Councilmember Daniels Cohen. It's still online and still available okay, for signature. Right. <laughs> and you can get a t-shirt. All the council members yes. can get one of these t-shirts. They have them available for everybody. Um, $25. I'm getting one tonight. So. Um, Councilmember Schultz has something else, and I know either the city manager or the clerk has something. So, um, Joe, you mentioned uh, corporate sponsorship, yeah, that's and I would instruct, I would really encourage you to look into that. Yep. Uh, I, that. I, I think if you're going to put up signs on the inside of the fence. There should be things that dogs can read, like pictures of cats and bunnies and squirrels and, chicken, and mice, chickens. chickens, something. But, uh, but, I, but seriously, on the corporate sponsorship, we, we know that there's an awful lot of people who make their living uh, in re relationship to dogs, you know, dog walkers, uh, dog trainers, veterinarians, uh, you know, you know the the pet smarts of this world, the, the big bad wolves, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And it would be easy for you, for the organization, to create a brochure that describes your organization, and then just lists its sponsors on the back, saying these are our sponsors, and we we encourage you to uh, to use them. And that that doesn't have to be a billboard. That could be just something that's in a slot and a rainproof uh, box that people could pick up, which would have the information about the hours and maybe the location of uh, the other dog park in the city, if there is one, and how to join the organization and all the usual kind of stuff. But I think you, that way you could raise some money, um, and you, it would be a nice uh, symbiotic relationship between your organization and some, some private businesses that are, do work that's related to, uh, to, to dogs. And it keeps the, pic the, the, the city out of the picture in that regard, because we can't be involved in promoting businesses. 
Does that make sense? It, it does make sense. Um, I'm not sure if we will have a brochure, but if we do, it so certainly makes one, some sense. I'm just not saying I, you should. I, I still think the council would have to consent to having those brochures with advertisement there since it would be right. city, county uh, property. I, I think we could figure all that out. Councilmember Smith. Thanks. Uh, Joe, I want to thank you and everyone else for coming out tonight. I've been a huge supporter of the dog park since you uh, brought it to me a number of months ago. Uh, I have a few questions um, regarding the insurance. Have you guys talked to anybody to see how much difference the rate would be if it was fenced compared to what it was unfenced? In the data that we reviewed from the city, basically that was the staff packet that was prepared for council. There were two times in the uh, minutes that I saw online where this uh, came up. Uh, that issue was not raised. Um, okay. and so the city staff might have that information, but it, it hasn't been available to me. Okay. Now, I do have uh, some concern with the Sligo Maple location with possible runoff <laughs> into Sligo Creek. Have you guys looked at that, or are you guys going to do a future impact study with maybe Friends of Sligo Creek and see if that would be an issue? The, the county um, actually has um, a process that they've set up. As you know, the county is doing dog parks all over the place now, including Silver Spring. And they have certain criteria, and one of the criteria that they require is, I believe it's a 75-foot buffer between streams and dog parks. Um, they believe that that is sufficient to deal with the runoff so that, you know, any uh, acidity from the urine, that sort of thing, is uh, basically treated before it gets into the waterway. So uh, certainly it's something that we would look at. I I'm a member of Friends of Sligo Creek, so I know the folks there and can talk to them. Uh, we certainly could uh, work with them to have best management practices, and I have no problem with that. But I think the big uh, thing that would deal with it is the buffer uh, width. You mentioned in your presentation the memorandum of agreement with the county and the city regarding the parks, right? Correct. I haven't seen it. Does it say how the cost is divided for the maintenance of the parks? If, if we decide to go forward with this, would the county give us some type of reimbursement if we don't uh, if they don't have to do any future maintenance and we take on this responsibility? Um, I, I don't know that off the top of my head and I'd have to look back at the memorandum agreement. I thought I had it uh, up and I could just re refer to it here, but it's not on my computer. I mean, it's on there, but right. I'd have to search for it. So, um, and that's something that I would work with city staff to make sure that those details are uh, revealed to you all before you know you committed yay or nay on spending money for the dog park. Okay, thank you, Joe. Um, and I'm assuming that the memorandum of agreement that you're referring to is the one that's specifically for Wilhelm Field. Yeah, there's actually two that uh, the city clerk provided to me, um, and uh, one was for that Ed Wilhelm Field, right. was specific to that, and then there was another one, and I don't remember the exact content of each one, but there were two that were okay. provided by city Cause, staff. Because I know that the one for Ed Wilhelm uh, sets out uh, the city being responsible for certain maintenance in return for uh, the ability to uh, schedule and program. Right. So it gives the city priority for use in return for picking up some of the costs. Oh, and it's, I, I should note that Ed Wilhelm came to talk to us at the, right. the thing and seemed very supportive of this. And he didn't have shoes on. Was he wearing, yeah, was he wearing <laughs> shoes? He, he was not wearing <laughs> shoes, no. <laughs> no I, I'd have to look at our signatures, but we might even have his signature. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Um, I, th I think that, uh, oh, and one other thing I was just going to mention with the uh, advertising, uh, I wanted to remind my colleagues that the city does currently have one uh, public-private partnership agreement with an entity for providing bus shelters on city right-of-way and uh, that as part of that it has the advertising on those shelters so when you see the advertise the shel bus shelters with advertising in the city the city gets revenue from that advertising um, I think the way to go forward on this is my sense is that the council wants to find a way to make a 
dog park or multiple dog parks happen. Uh, I think the next step is to uh, have you uh, get together with our city staff and provide any informa additional information or uh, resources that they might need to go ahead and begin to talk with the county, particularly park and planning, about uh, what we might need to do to make any of these uh, locations happen since three of them are uh, park and planning and we have the one potential, as you say, that there might be some joint ownership of the one site up by the tennis courts with uh, Montgomery County Public Schools. And so to investigate that, find out uh, what that particular location involves as far as ownership and find out uh, potential ways to make those happen so that we can come back to this with some additional information with input from staff from the county and from your group and uh, go to next steps. And, okay. and did you mention insurance as part of that list? Yes, uh, to, to find out from uh, local government insurance trust what that uh, entails. And the county, I should note, is uh, specifically interested in meeting with the city manager to talk about this. I've already had an email okay. exchange with one of the supervisors. Today. Good. So, so I think we can uh, we can say that uh, we'll get that information, and uh, we'll schedule uh, whatever seems appropriate in the time frame that we can get to it. Uh, we know it's going to be uh, at the earliest September, but uh, we'll we'll see what we get back and what we need to find out and what we need to do, and uh, we'll schedule it and uh, take it from there. Great. Thank you all for your time. I appreciate it. And thank it. you very much and for and all the support. effort you've put into this, and uh, it really helped move it along. Great. And to everybody else who uh, voiced their support and uh, potentially their uh, their wallets. <laughs> Thanks very much.